that circularly polarized light is not real. It's a fake. Now, before you get all excited, okay, we do have what we call circularly polarized light, and it's very useful. But it's not a true circular polarization. What do I mean by that? If this were your polarization angle, the energy from one pole would eventually rotate through the horizontal and then down through the vertical and then through the horizontal. So your, your pole would spin 360 degrees as it's traveling through space. That would be a true circular polarized wave. Okay, if you imagine this ruler, if I could take this nice flat ruler and twist it into what looks like a drill bit, and I have a drill bit here. Okay, if you look at on end of this drill bit, it looks flat. Of course, granted, if it were the ruler, it'd be really flat. But as I push the drill bit through my finger, think of my fingers as a vertically polarized uh, polarizer. Well, then this circular pole at one axis should fit through the vertical pole, and then as it's going through, it should continue to change pole axis. That would mean that a circularly polarized wave should be able to pass through two orthogonal uh, vertical polarizers. Okay, that's what that would mean. That a ver that if that it would be able to get through one horizontally, then spin as it's going, and eventually hit the other one at the right phase to come through. That would mean that a particular frequency of light. If I change the distance between the filters. I would allow different frequencies of light to come through. But as you can see, no light passes through. That's because circularly polarized light is not a real polarization. It's a synthesis. So what you're looking at is a pair of 3D glasses that you would get from a 3D movie house. It's sitting on a mirror, and the camera has a circular polarizer on it. And as you can see, the opposite lenses are blocked, which is the thing I used before to prove that reflections off of a conductive mirror surface. This is a mirrored surface. It uses a metal film on the back of the glass, typically silver, and that is your reflective surface. And that shows that light reflecting off of a metallic surface reflects as a negative image, a negative image in phase, which was very important for uh, one of my ethereal mechanics stuff, especially new induction. But anyway, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you that these three, this circular polarizers are not real either. These are synthesizers. They're not polarizers. They're not filters. Okay, because watch this. If I take this linear polarizer and I put it in front of the lens, magically the lens clears. It doesn't matter how I turn this. You'll notice that the color kind of changes a little bit. I think that has to do with the fact that the mirror is selecting a little bit more of the horizontal than vertical because of the steep angle, but I'm not going to worry about that now. The key thing here to see is it doesn't matter really. Yeah, I guess it is because I put a steep angle, it cuts out. You can see that the lens clears. And I can do this with the other side too. Both lenses clear. Okay, so what's happening is if there is circular polarized waves coming out of here, it's coming out at the negative or the opposite of what the what the polarizer on the camera will pass through. Okay, but what's happening here is I am canceling the circular polarization. If that were a truly a circularly polarized wave, it would be able to make it through this filter and still be circularly polarized. It would still be blocked by the camera, as I explained with the drill analogy. And it wouldn't matter how I turn this it would still be blocked, but it's not. And the reason why it passes through everything is what's happening here is it's not real circular pole. Circular polarized light is basically a horizontally polarized wave and a, a vertically polarized wave that have a special phase relationship. Okay, and what this glass, these glasses do is um, and so when it's coming through, all I'm doing is blocking one polarization or the other. Okay, because these circular polarizers will pass linear polarized light. Okay, you can see this over here. If I put this behind the glass, I'm letting only circularly, uh, um, only linearly polarized light is getting into the lens of the camera. And this proves that the filters will pass linear polarized light. 
because this is a linear polarizer that I'm holding in my hand. And so therefore, since I'm blocking one of the two waves that make up the synthetic circular pole, all I've done is eliminate one or the other. And that shows it's perfectly synthetic circular polarization. I hope that was clear. That was kind of, it was kind of done impromptu, so it might be a little screwed up. Again, again, what is circular polarization is a synthesis. And let me prove this to you, because watch when I put this behind the glass. But then when I turn it with the other way, it allows it to pass still. Ooh. It allows it to pass. It has no effect on the light coming through on either lens when I do this. When I turn it sideways, both lenses are blocked. Hmm. How is that? But then when I put it in front, the light comes through. Hmm. How about that? How about them apples? So, that goes to show you've got two different things going on here. Okay, these lenses are not real circular polarized filters. If they were, they would only let circularly polarized waves through. They don't. They don't take circular polarized waves from the back. They take linear polarized waves from the back and synthesize circularly polarized waves coming out. Going the other way, they take the synthetic circular polarized wave and from that, those two waves are mixed together to create a linear polarized wave coming out the back. Okay, because when I take this on the back side, you can see I can block it because I'm going the opposite to the linear polarization on the back side of the lens. And now I'm going with it. And you'll see that this relationship holds if I flip the glasses around. So I get the pass and I get the fail. So that means that the light coming out of the back, the back side of these lenses are linear polarizers. Okay. The front side are synthetic circular synthesizers, and they work more like a detector. They're not really filters. They more, work more like detectors. And the thing is, when you buy the filters for the camera to do this experiment, you're going to have to take the filter out of the camera shell. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, this has a little slip ring on the outside that you're going to have to unscrew so you can flip this lens around because they put them in the in the lens backwards. You can see it, everything passes through, but when I turn it around, then you get the effect that I showed before. Okay, because this, this works the right way because I had to switch the lens around. When you get them, they have the linear part on the forward side of the lens and the circular part on the back side of the lens. And so from the camera's perspective, it only acts like a linear polarizer. If you want it to work like a circular polarizer, you have to switch the lens inside the little container. You can do that by, there's a little slip ring with notches. You have to unscrew that, take the lens out, flip, and put the little, little collet, I guess they call it, back in. Okay. And here's another reason why circularly polarized waves are fake because there's such a thing called elliptical polarization. In elliptical polarization, one pole, let's call it the vertical, has more amplitude than the horizontal. And so the, you get a circular polarization. Okay, that would violate conservation of energy if tr circular polarization were true. Because what you're saying is that you have an amplitude as you're in the vertical, and then as that pole swings through to the horizontal, it somehow loses some of its energy. And then as it swings back to vertical, it gains all that energy back again, and then it loses the energy, and then it gains the energy. Now, that violates conservation of energy. Therefore, circular polarization is, is not real. What we have for elliptical polarization is we have a horizontal wave that's independent, completely independent of the vertical. Okay. The only thing it is, is it has a, has a solid phase relationship with its vertical body. And that is where you get the synthetic circular polarization, or in this case, elliptical polarization. Okay, so, again, just like fake yellow, okay, which is a synthesis of two different things, okay, elliptical polar and circular polarization is just a synthesis of two linearly polarized waves. It's not a true polarization. 
That was one of the things that was holding me back on ethereal mechanics. I couldn't figure out how the wave equation it comes about with circular polarization. That's because it's not. It's not real. It's two independent linear polarized waves that are traveling together. And then you say to me, well, then how do these how do these guys work then to give us the effect that we see at the movie theater? Well, I'm going to explain how polarizers work, and I'm going to explain that in the next video, which will be for Patreon members only. Okay. By the way, we are being supervised by the quality control experts of Philip the Cat. And I have a question. Is Philip a white cat with black splotches or a black cat with white splotches? I guess that's the distinctive uncertainty principle. This is a demonstration of fake yellow. What you see before you is a ping pong ball. And what I have here is I have a flashlight with a green lens. Okay, I have another flashlight with a red lens. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shine the green light on the ping pong ball and then the red light. So here's what the red light looks like on the ping pong ball. Here's what the green light looks like on the ping pong ball. Now I'm going to shine them together. And if I do this just right, get the right levels, you should see yellow. Right there, right about there, if I get it just right. And I can change the shade of yellow by pulling back on the green and adding more red, making it more orange. And then going back to more of a yellowy green. And I can change it based on how much I add of each color. Okay, but essentially you get yellow. That's not real yellow. That's fake yellow. Because our eyes can't tell the difference between fake yellow and real yellow. And you say, well, wait a minute, hold on a minute. What do you mean? What's the difference between fake yellow and real yellow? This is real yellow. Okay, what I got here is I got a pair of safety glasses with a flashlight. That's how I'm making it look yellow there. Not the best, but you get the idea. So real yellow, yellow light is between 560 and 590 nanometers. Okay, red light is between 635 and 700 nanometers. And green light is 520 to 560 nanometers. And so what you see with fake yellow isn't really yellow. It is a trick of your eye. There's red, there's green, and that's fake yellow. Which actually looks better on the camera in real life if I just get the mixing of it right. Okay, this fake yellow doesn't mean it's not useful. Because this fake yellow is the way that your camera CCD image sensor and your television, color television or color LCD or color LED uh, displays make yellow for your eyes. Uh, if there was an alien that could really see the difference between red and yellow light together, that alien would look at our television screen and say, no, that's not yellow, that's red and green mixed together. Okay, so it's very useful. It allows us to make a television screen with just three pixel colors per pixel. And how we mix those pixels, we can get any color representation to the human eye. Okay, that is a very awesome thing. Okay, this ends the demonstration of fake yellow, but fake does not mean unuseful. Thank you.